It's another meal in Philadelphia, and today we're going to a really, really cool place called Cleaver's. It's literally right around the corner from our, our hotel. In fact, I think we can actually see it from the from our room here. For you guys who love continuity, this is being filmed the same exact day we did Pats versus Geno's, which means we had a lot of cheesesteaks today, but we couldn't leave well enough alone. I had to try one outside of the general institutions to see, hey, can you get a good cheesesteak anywhere in Philadelphia? So let me show you what the place looks like a little bit, and then we'll come back here and I'll recap some of what we had. If this is your first time coming into one of my videos, I do restaurant reviews like this, share my recipes. It's a lot of fun and I'm sure you're gonna love it. If you like food, consider subscribing. Now I mentioned that Pat's versus Gino's kind of left a little bit of a void in us, but I wanna leave it right up front here. I'm not throwing shade at either of those places. We actually had quite an enjoyable time, but you have to watch that video to really understand what I'm talking about. I wanted to check out another restaurant to see what's going on at Pat and Gino's. Why, why do people consider it tourist traps? When we found this place, Carver's. We need something that's low key that we could just sit down and get a quick dinner and then get back to the hotel and rest up our feet and back. So that's what we did. And we sat down in the restaurant. It's kind of a cool place. There, it's kind of two levels. On the first level, it's like a customizable, like you get to make your own order. Basically, it's a takeaway restaurant. I just used a lot of words to explain something very simple. And then upstairs, there's a bar with a handful of tables. I would say three, four. We sat at one of the tables and we ordered. Now, I have no idea why, but I was really in the mood for some onion rings. And they had some onion rings on the menu, about seven or eight bucks. And they give you a decent handful of onion rings, nice and large. When I looked through their menu, they had quite a lot of different creations. They have one that's like, pizza or pizzas or something like that, that actually has like hunks of mozzarella sticks, like fried put on top of the cheesesteak and then some Parmesan cheese, tomato sauce. I wasn't ready to go that crazy today, but there was something on the menu that was right up my alley that I really needed to try. And the one that I ordered was called the effing hot steak. And I got to go to the notes for this one. Ribeye steak, hot cherry pepper relish, fried onions, American cheese, which I subs for, I subbed provolone in for that and sriracha aioli. Let me tell you, I, I had those Pat and Gino's cheesesteaks and I had a cherry pepper on the side with each of them and those things are spicy. This basically recreated the entire experience and brought a couple of characteristics that I was kind of looking for out of those two establishments. So the cheesesteak at Carver's was a lot bigger and the roll that they use is actually very similar to the rolls that we get upstate New York or even New York City. It's kind of got a little bit of a crust to it but not like to the point where you can't bite into it. So it's soft and nice and crumbly inside. This had some sesame seeds on it. Absolutely amazing. And it's one of those things where you can keep this, this kind of sub roll in a bag and then you could steam it when you're ready to go. And I think that's exactly what they do here. It was loaded with steak and they had a lot of that cherry pepper relish inside of it. And then that aioli on top, it was spicy as hell. I understand why they call it the effing hot or effing spicy, because uh, it's spicy. My lips are still burning from that. All right, I need to stop here for a second and just address something. I've probably said the word Carver's instead of Cleaver's a handful of times. I apologize. The name of the restaurant is Cleaver's. So no joke, there had to be easily a pound of steak inside of that sandwich and it was loaded with cheese. As soon as I picked it up, the cheese was really dripping out of it. And that sriracha aioli, it's one of those things where like, a cheesesteak under no circumstance needs sriracha aioli, but it was absolutely amazing. And if you like spicy food, between that and that cherry pepper relish, it's absolutely incredible. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the, my cheesesteak experience there was actually better than Pat's or Gino's individually and even together. I don't wanna say that like maybe anywhere makes a better cheesesteak than Pat's or Gino's, but I think that as far as what most people are gonna expect out of a Philly cheesesteak, you're probably better off ordering from anywhere else. But like I said in the other video, those tourist experiences are a lot of fun and it's a cool little adventure. You know, sometimes you gotta experience stuff like that. I realized that for the entire rest of the night, I was probably gonna be down for the count after eating a big gut bomb like this. So that was the entire point. This was the last meal of the day. This was kind of like to cap off the cheesesteak experience and just really get it out of my system. I really don't see myself ordering a cheesesteak for the rest of the trip, but never say never. In my opinion, I think the cool thing about this place Cleaver's 
is that they have that split level. It kind of reminds me if you're local to the Albany area, we have a place called Bombers. It's kind of a casual takeout place downstairs and then upstairs is a bar with, you know, kind of, I, I call it junk food. It's like French fries, burritos, you know, stuff to kind of soak up the alcohol. And that's exactly what this kind of experience was at, at Cleaver's. I really thought that the low key vibe was awesome. While we were there, there was a whole mix of families and kind of a bunch of dudes getting together for happy hour, which actually reminds me, I did order a beer that was kind of indigenous to Pennsylvania here. Uh, and I'll put it up on the screen. I forgot what it was now, but it was a pretty complex IPA and it was a few cents off because it was happy hour. So between happy hour, cheesesteak, onion rings, I would say that was a pretty successful trip. In the bar area, the bartender is actually the, the waiter or waitress. And the young lady that we had was super nice, super accommodating, uh, came by right away. And she was split between all her duties behind the bar. Yeah, I would say overall, this was a really, really, really nice experience. I think that was four reallys, maybe three reallys. It was very good. I would definitely recommend if you're in this kind of written house area of Pennsylvania, South 18th Street, if that means anything. I honestly don't really know the, the, the area too much here, but I, I would say that was probably a really, really great experience for a cheesesteak here in Philadelphia. And that's just about all I have to say about Cleavers, and I'll make sure I use the right name here, Cleavers, not Carvers. If you like this, be sure to hit it with a like and consider subscribing. And check out that review of Pat and Gino's right here.